Good morning, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 35 of Stitching the High Notes, a video podcast and YouTube channel about knitting, sewing, music, cross-stitching, and the arts and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me on the social medias as Opera Joe most notably on Instagram and Ravelry. There is a wonderful Ravelry group which you can find by searching Stitching the High Notes on the Groups tab. In there, there are details about knit-alongs and make-alongs and Ask Away thread and Introductions thread. We'd love to hear all about you. Um, as well as the community corkboard thread, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And you can also find show notes for every episode. You can also find show notes on stitchingthehighnotes.com, which just recently launched and um, is really exciting. I'll be adding more blog entries to that space, and it's another kind of uh, space outside of Ravelry for our community. And yeah, I'm coming from you from, I'm coming from you, I'm coming to you from San Francisco Bay Area. I live in Berkeley, California, where it is definitely summer. It's not too warm. Um, it has the morning fog that burns off and then it gets a little warm. I've got my sunflowers here for the summer. Um, yeah, and I have lots to share with you this week. Um, First off, I did want to acknowledge, it's, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw it was a bit of a, not a bit, it was a tough week for my family. We had to um, say goodbye to one of our dear family dogs, Hildy. I'll try not to get too emotional here, but I did want to thank you all so much for your lovely, heartwarming, and comforting notes. Um, I shared them all with my family and we took great comfort in them. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but um, it's our beloved Hildy just had been suffering from a lot of anxiety um, that had turned into some pretty severe aggression. And the vet thinks that it was probably had to do with a brain lesion something she probably was born with and just has got had gotten worse with age. And it was extremely painful to see a member of your family, a fur baby that was so sweet and um, gentle, kind of turn into Jekyll and Hyde a little bit there. Um, and she just was living in such a state of paranoia and anxiety and it had gotten to a point where it just wasn't safe for my mom, who was who was the main caretaker for our dogs. Um, so we had to make probably the hardest decision you can make for as a pet owner when it's not totally evident that the dog needs to cross over the rainbow bridge, as we were saying in our family. But um, we did think that it was for the best and the vet really did think that it was for the best as well so thank you so much again for your love and support I'm beyond grateful for you all and continue to be I just see something on my window so I'll be right back and I need to grab a tissue as well <laughs> okay we're back um so thank you I'm very grateful for you all so without further ado, let's get to some crafty sewing nitty goodness. As is tradition, we start each episode officially with tea time. And today I am drinking all of the coffee. <laughs> I um, have an espresso machine that I've talked about. If you're a past viewer, welcome back glad to have you and if you're a new viewer thank you so much for checking me out among the many podcasts out there I hope you enjoy your visit today but um, usually I drink Earl Grey tea and I've been drinking espresso in the morning and then go into Earl Grey tea um, and this morning I just needed all of the coffee <laughs> so um, I am on my third cup but it is decaf um, I've been trying to do just one 
cup of regular espresso and then switching over to decaf after that and really just having one more. And this is really a cappuccino. It's got some lovely froth and foam. It's delicious and it's almond milk. Um, I tend to try to stay away from dairy products as much as possible. Just a little bit lactose intolerant. But yeah, and I, there's some wonderful um, almond milk that is for barista purposes, if you will. So you get this lovely foamy froth on the top. So I'm babbling. Let's get to the good stuff. Grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. Cheers. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I should acknowledge too, I have new hair. <laughs> I have new hair. I got it dyed. It's super red. I love it. It's going to lighten up a little bit, but I'm actually kind of glad um, of how dark it kind of turned out. And then I'm trying to do more of a retro vintage -y look. I've been trying to transition, if you will, into more of a vintage style. And I was really inspired by Lisa Comfort of So Over It, um, a wonderful YouTube channel. And she has some shops in London um, or in the UK. I don't know if they're all in London. And um, she has this wonderful hairstyle and with the bangs and kind of the vintage 60s, 50s look. So I'm wearing it down right now. It's a couple of days after getting it done. And I wore it up in a ponytail yesterday, which was fun with a little bit of a bouffant. And I'm going to try some other updos, which will be fun. But I wear my hair up all the time. I just can't get around it. It's just how it is, especially with how thick it is. And I wanted a hairstyle that would allow me to do that without but still have something to frame my face, hence the banks. So I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, straight as well. Um, and um, something that I usually do, I kind of go back and forth between wearing it curly and then straight. So anyway, I'll talk about it more maybe in backstage knitting, but let's get on to the good stuff. So community cork board. So community cork board is a place where we highlight um, some wonderful things from you makers out there for your shops, any new patterns that you've released that you have uh, provided details about in the community cork board thread in the Ravelry group. So there were a few entries this week, a couple of which the codes have expired by now, but I still wanted to share with you another great reminder to always check out the Ravelry group and the community cork board thread for any deals that happen in the in between the weeks of the um, episodes. So the first is Amanda. Hi, Amanda of Little Bitty Delights on Etsy. She has a wonderful Etsy shop and she makes gorgeous clay um stitch markers and charms and she just did a big update for her shop and she is getting ready for summer some really lovely treats which you will probably see pictured right here and she is offering you all i believe it's a 15 percent off discount using the code summer high notes 15 which you can see right here and just plop that coupon code. This is good all summer. So it goes until the end of August of 2017. So enjoy, she's got some really cute stitch markers. So yay. And then Karen of Sunnyside Handmade. She makes stitch markers, progress keepers, and lots of cute goodies as well. She is had offered a 20% off coupon, which was good until yesterday, May 28th. Today is the 29th, May 29th. So I hope some of you were able to catch that and take advantage of that. Do check out our shop. She's got some lovely things in there. And then finally, Suzanne, who is Aunt Taluri on Ravelry, um, she had just released a new pattern, a new design called My Best Friend Cowl. And this is so touching. She wrote this pattern in honor of her mother. This is Memorial Day, so it's kind of fitting to have released this pattern. Um, in honor of her mother who passed away in 2011. Um, and she passed away from colon cancer. So she wrote this pattern um, so that each section is honoring a memory of her mother. 
Um, it's a celebration and she had offered a discount um, until yesterday so I hope some of you all caught that and took advantage of it but um, it's still available on Ravelry. Check out the cowl. It's really lovely. It looks like a really fun pattern. So thank you, Suzanne, for sharing that. And if you are a maker and want to share um, some discounts with our community, or if you have a new item that you're selling or a new shop that's opening, um, do put in those details in the thread and I will highlight them as I can on each episode. No finished objects again this week because um, I'm working on some whips, some works in progress that are long, kind of long term, which are really exciting. So my whips, I did a little bit of work on this week, not a ton um, because of um, going up to be with family, um, just kind of got off schedule a little bit this week. Um, I was on vacation, so I was able to do a little bit more than usual. Um, so yeah, so I did a lot of work on my Tale as Old as Time cowl by Anne Valley. And this is a cowl that is um, two-sided. It's a tubular cowl. It uses two skeins inspired by Beauty and the Beast by Mustache Yarns. It's self-striping. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the second skein and this is what's left. <laughs> So you can, if you watched last week, you can tell I did quite a bit. Love these colors. So pretty. I don't have it in my bag right now. It's kind of too big for, it's definitely now too big for a sock size bag. So I've been just knitting on it at home in one of my beautiful yarn bowls. My first yarn bowl that my mom bought on a trip many years ago. Sorry, I feel like I have... Do you ever see, like, I saw a spider earlier, that's why I paused, and do you ever see those and then feel like you have them all over? Ugh. Okay, we're all good. So, here is my cow. It's humongous. So, this is where I was last week, last episode, and I knit all of that. Yay! So I'm really enjoying working on this. It was really great for this week. It was something mindless that I could just pick up um, and work on, you know, not too worried about stress, you know, influencing the gauge too much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm adoring this knit and I'm really looking forward to it being wearable and done. I think I'm going to really concentrate this next week and try to finish it up and get this product done. Um, but I adore this yarn. I really enjoy the fabric that's being created. It's I'm using 2.75 millimeter needles, which I think are US 2s. It's funny, I'm, I've totally converted my brain over to millimeter instead of US sizes. So it's harder for me to think of the U of the U.S. sizes than it is the millimeter. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the fabric um, that's being created. It's just really, really pretty. Yeah, and very comforting. So I think um, I'm eager to get it off the needles just because there are some other kind of vanilla projects that I really want to make. I want to get back into making socks for my box of socks, which is a year-long cow, uh, cow um, being hosted by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast. And um, yeah, so really enjoying that. And it's kind of cool because it just like folds up into this really pretty little thing of fabric. Yeah, a very good comforting cozy knit. The next project um, that I worked a little bit on is my summer garment that pullover that it is in my fringe bag with all my little pins. And this is for the summer cowl which is going on until the end of August. Um, it's a cowl to make a summer garment, whether it be a linen or cotton pullover or cardigan or really lightweight, um, even in wool cardigan or pullover, anything that's for the summer in your climate where you are. Um, it is for garments only, so no like, um, 
you know, shawls or haps or what have you. It's to kind of build your wardrobe with summer um, knitted items. Um, and so this is going on, as I said, until the end of August. So there's plenty of time. Whips are allowed. So if you have any of uh, summer garments that have been languishing on the needles. Now's the chance to pick it up. There have been some lovely finished objects posted in the FO thread in the Ravelry group. Um, and it's, they're absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Congratulations, you all. And the chatter thread is a buzz with projects that we're working on and things we want to cast on. Um, so do check it out. There's some lovely prizes as well for the end of the cow, including this is my mug, but this will be for you. This lovely mug um, from Natalie of Remembrances Pottery, and it even has stamped on here, Summer Garment Cowl. So yeah, so yes, indeedy. So I um, am making this out of Quince & Co yarn, and this is linen, organic linen yarn, and it's in the Eclipse colorway. Let me get it out here this very dark kind of charcoal gray and it's I'm starting to think I need to get some wooden needles because it's starting to get a little unwieldy I'm using right now my carbons and I've got some little stoppers on there right now from Coco Knits um, to make sure they don't slip off the needles but this is the snake skin is what I was calling it it's starting to unfurl <laughs> <laughs> which is what I wanted so I just did a little bit it was where I showed you last was from this progress keeper up and this is a little acorn from um, a homespun house that I got a couple of years ago so yeah so I've done a little bit I'm still I'm starting to second guess my fabric I'm wondering if it's a little bit too big but my swatch looked like this and when it washed it did kind of come together a little bit um I don't know I'm just like second guessing myself so yeah I'm marking my increases so you increase every so rows it's a paid for pattern by Layla Rob. so I do, it's a Gilead pullover I don't know if I said that <laughs> it's a Gilead pullover here's a picture and um I'm out of sorts today mercy so I'm marking the rows that I've done an increase on with these little light bulb guys which I love these stitch markers so yeah so it's great so I really want to get going and get it as I said I think I might get some wooden needles because um, it is starting to get a little bit slippery um, it's hard to kind of get into the groove of it especially when I'm knitting on the cowl which is this squishy beautiful like woolen yumminess so it takes a little bit for my hands to kind of adjust to that um, and I was finding I was kind of like a little bit too tense um, trying to ensure that it doesn't get like go off of the needle so it's not super slippery but I'm wondering if it would make it easier I might have some wooden like clover needles um, already in that size that I might just try I don't know if I could do a whole garment on them but just try to see if it grips a little bit better before I invest in some nicer wooden needles so that's my thinking with that I'm using size I think size five I'm trying to be better about talking about my needles <laughs> um, it's totally worn off how about that so yeah I'm pretty sure it's size five all of the details about my projects are on my project pages on Ravelry and that's usually what I link to in the show notes too just FYI so the snake skin grows <laughs> so gross ah. okay on to the next whip which I didn't work on but I did want to highlight so this is for the Outlander Cal, which I'm co-hosting with the beautiful Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. And this is going until the end of June. So we're starting to get close to the end of the cow. <laughs> so I've got to get cracking on my project here. Um, and this is to celebrate things all Outlander, which are a series of books by Diana Gabaldon, as well as... Um, a wonderful TV series not safe for children but it's wonderful so I am um, didn't 
touch this at all, but I did want to show it to you. Um, and this is my, I'm in love with an 18th century Scotsman cowl. And it's by the lovely CC Allman designer, extraordinary of Java Pearl Designs. And yeah, I need to move my progress thing up here because that's where I showed you last was right there. I haven't touched it, but I'm looking forward to working on this probably this week a little bit. Um, just have to get my focus back. This week was not the week to be working on a patterned cable cowl, <laughs> but um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to working on that this coming week a little bit. And this is a bag by The Handmaker's Bag, which I love, which a similar one in brown is part of a gorgeous price package, which I talked about, I think in the last episode. Gorgeous, very sturdy, and it's perfect for the large skein of yarn that I have in here. So, this brings us on to Cross Stitch Corner. I've been working on the forest pattern by Setsuma Street on Etsy, and here is a picture of where I was at last week when I showed you. I had to get some coffee, I'm sorry. <laughs> and here is what I've done. Yay! So I finished this tree, which is gorgeous. I just love the shading that she includes in here. And then I started a little bit um, on this tree and I finished out these branches. I'm off a little bit here on the pattern so I don't know what happened if I got off on this side or what but I'm just gonna go with it I know the rest of it is a-okay and it's all good but I switched out to my needle minder this is a magnetic needle minder it's my needle um, by a needle runs through it which is a local South Bay company on Etsy and it's uh, Harry Potter inspired. It says, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. And I just swapped it out last night because I felt like it. And um, yeah, I kind of, I love swapping out needle minders. I'm like, I could do that every week or just when I want to, which makes me want to build my collection even more. Danger. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had to say about it. I'm going to work on it a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to figure out a better way ergonomically to work on it because right now I kind of, I kind of tuck it under my boob <laughs> a little bit, like under here and work on it or just kind of rest it on top of the ladies like this. Someday I really want to get a stand um, by, there's one by Clem and Clem, I think is what it's called, um, that my friend Margaret has which would be glorious to have, but I don't I really have space for it in here, so it's kind of like whatever, but um, I love it. And I'm really starting to see, since I've um, been starting my embroidery floss, if you will, um, in better ways, not tying a knot, um, my stitching is so much cleaner than it used to be. So you can kind of see, here's like how it was before. It's all kind of cray cray looking. And then now this is with like the new ways. It's a lot cleaner. So I am digging it. And what else was I gonna say? Oh, thank you all so much. A few of you, including Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls. Hi Candace. Um, they, uh, Candace and you all recommended, um, thank, thank you so much um, on a good way to, um, get better strands or a single strand um, from your embroidery floss because it's a lot longer and it was kind of unwieldy and how I used to do it was take two strands and you could fairly easily just kind of go like this um, without it getting too tangled. Um, but I just, I think I probably had seen this way back in the day but totally didn't trust it. But what you do is you take like a single strand here Pardon me. 
and you just hold it out like this and you just pull up. Bloop. Amazing. So I, once again, things are more streamlined and easy and I feel like I'm just flying with my cross stitch. I also think that I'm going to frame this project instead of making a pillow out of it, especially after seeing Candace's recently framed project um, that she just got done at Michael's because I, I think this would actually look really good up on that wall back there. It's got a lot of si the similar colors of my space. So yeah, so that's cross stitch corner for this week. So delicious. I sewed. Okay, so yesterday was quite the adventure. And at the end of So Delicious, I'll plop in. I did an Instagram story series to kind of show me ripping the band-aid off and starting to sew. So the first thing that was awesome was that when I was up at mom's this uh, past week, I remembered that she had foldable six-foot tables. So I was like, oh, duh, I could totally fit that in my kitchen. I probably had talked about it before. It's been in the back of my mind. Um, so I was like, okay, let me just try it, see how it fits in the space. If it's too cumbersome, I can just take it back up. It's amazing. Oh. So I unfolded it and put it in my kitchen. It fits perfectly. I can still walk around and do all my cutting and measuring and all of that stuff. It's not too low. I might try to hack it similar to how Ramona, hi Ramona, um, put like some PC pipe. What do you call it? Um, to elevate the table, but it doesn't really bug me too much right now. Um, so yeah, so I cut out my PDF pattern pieces yesterday for the Sorbetto top by Colette, and then I grabbed my muslin, and then I realized I had bought the wrong size muslin. <laughs> I'd gotten 36 inch wide instead of, I need at least 60 inch wide for this pattern. So I was like, ugh. So I went back to Joanne's. I had gone gone there earlier in the day to get some paper cutting scissors because I didn't have any. I just had fabric cutting scissors. And my great grandmother and my great great grandfather, who was a tailor, would probably like roll in their graves if they knew I was cutting paper with fabric scissors. So, like a good little sewist, I went to <laughs> Joanne's and got that. But then when I realized my muslin was all wonky in the wrong size, I had to go back to Joanne's. So I went back and I promptly got um, 10 yards because they were 40% off um, of 90 inch muslin. And I was like, I'm gonna need muslin for future projects and um, for Comic-Con, which I'll talk about here in a little bit too. Um, and I ended up getting the rest of the bolt. <laughs> so I'm stocked up, man. Um, and I came back, I bought something else, which I'll show you here in a bit, but I came back and I cut out my pattern. Now, let me, let me have a little bit of caffeination here. So I decided this is a free pattern, so I'm not really giving too much away. And this is stuff you can find online. So in this pattern, my bust size is 46 on the spot, but my waist and hip size is much larger <laughs> than the 18 size that's listed here. So I thought, okay, well I'll make a muslin at 20 and see if that fits better, if it's too big up here, but fits right down here. And then I started second guessing myself because my hip size is much closer to the 22 and I was like okay let me just like go cray cray and just make a size 22 muslin just to like like break the seal and sew something it's not anything I'm gonna be wearing and just like get all the techniques down get my space organized get the flow going everything and so I made a 22 size and OMG, it's like a freaking tent. <laughs> Look at how big this is. <laughs> it's 
it's so big on me. So I think the 18 actually, which is two sizes smaller, is actually going to be spot on. Um, it might be a little snug in the hip area, so we'll see. With, I'm going to make another muslin of just this straight 18 with no modifications to see how it works. And somebody actually got back to me on Instagram um, and let me know that they had made one. They also had a bigger waist and hip measurement than what's listed on here, and it actually fits fine. So I think we'll be okay. So, but I did kind of want to show you, I did stay stitching around um, the neckline and the arms, and I did a really cool pleat in the front here, and you do like a little base to kind of hold it on the bottom too, and you can kind of see, I'll go, go with me on this journey here, so you can kind of see, and then, um, yeah, it's supposed to be pretty loose fitting. Then I did these ginormous bus darts. <laughs> this is really funny to show. So I did these darts and I'm really proud because I hadn't done them in like about four years or so, probably three and a half. Um, and it was on like really thick fabric if I remember correctly. So I was happy to do that and I had looked at a tutorial to kind of refresh my memory on it um, on Colette and also so over it. She has a wonderful tutorial on her YouTube channel. Um, and what else can I share about it? Yeah, I think it turned out really good. I'm gonna look up some techniques on how to um, finish seams. I don't have a serger or overlock, so I'll probably do like a zigzag. Um, the seams, are a little bit too thin I think to use pinking shears which is how I learned growing up and I have my great grandma's pinking shears actually I think it's great grandma might be Grammy Grammy are those yours anyway um so yeah and I love I felt like so in the groove I had room to cut I had um you know a wonderful space up here with my with my ironing board where I could pin things. I definitely, I made a little, let me grab it, hold on. I felt the need, I felt the need for a wrist pin cushion um, while I was doing this. So I'd made this a couple of years ago out of some really cute music fabric. I probably got it at Joann's or a quilt store and it has like a little Velcro thing. So I'll probably use this. It's kind of thin, so. If I start sewing hardcore, then I probably will need something more substantial. But it's pretty cute. Yay! Um, and yeah, so I'm going to make the size 18 muslin maybe today if editing um, goes fairly quickly for this little podcast. Um, and make another muslin and practice different ways of, oh, that's what I was talking about, of finishing seams. So I'll probably do a zigzag stitch. Um, I'll look and see if there are any other kind of cool ways to do it. And the other thing I'll be practicing is making bias tape um, because hopefully I have enough yardage to do that. I might have to go back and buy some more fabric. Oh darn. Um, but I'm going to make my own bias tape out of the fabric that I'm going to be making the tops out of. And mom had bought me this a couple of years ago for a stocking stuffer. So I a variety of different sizes um, and I'll be sure to show you how I do this when I do it and I found a really cool tutorial on how to make um, bias tape utilizing as little yardage of fabric as possible um, through Colette so I'll be sure to share that in the show notes as well so yeah I got my sewing groove back y'all I love it I'm want to sew all of the things now. So. Hi everybody. Oh yeah, I have new hair. <laughs> I will probably show it off in the next episode, but it's up for right now. I love it. It's super red. I still have some hair dye here, but I wanted to show you what I'm up to today. Here is what I'm up to. Ah, I'm going to sew don't mind my mess over there. <laughs> so I totally remembered that my mom has these foldable tables at home. So yeah, mom has these foldable six foot tables that we had gotten for my sister's 
some of them we had gotten for my sister's bridal shower, but I think it'll be perfect for cutting. What do you think? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pattern and then make some lunch and then cut my fabric. Stay tuned. Oh, and also, just so you know, I am going to cover this divide for now either with this or I have a cardboard kind of cut out from Singer that I'll put over the top. Um, so do not fret. Note to self for future pattern piecing from a PDF, get a tape dispenser. Good reminder to always check the width of your fabric on the end of your bolt. This is 90, so we're good. The one I had before was 36. <laughs> really fast when you have the right kind of fabric. <laughs> so I've cut my muslin and now I'm gonna go on to the next step. Okay, setup number two. I'm listening to an old episode of Critical Role. I've got my iron and my pieces. need a name for. Any ideas? I haven't sewn a dart in I think four years so here we go. <laughs> I stepped on the pedal too hard. Mr. Pointy has to come out and help. Methinks I sewed a dart. I tied my ends, I didn't backstitch. Now to do the other one. Oh man, I got lucky. My bobbin just ran out, so I've gotta redo it. I finished my tent. <laughs> I did it a size too big on purpose just to make sure, and I almost think I can go down two sizes, so we shall see. That was so much fun today. I've gained so much more confidence in my sewing. I feel, feel like I have my groove back. I'm gonna do a size 18 muslin tomorrow without any modifications to see if that works. But I might have to let out a little bit for the hips, because I got some bar than hips. <laughs> so we shall see. But I hope you had fun with this Insta story. I'll see you all in the next episode and on Instagram. Bye! So I have picked up my... My. I had picked up five patterns <laughs> at Joann's because they were having a Memorial Day sale. Um, they had five simplicity patterns for five bucks. So who could turn that down? So I'm going to Comic-Con again this year in San Diego, the mothership of Comic-Cons. And my friend is amazing and she went to school for costume design and she's going, she's cray cray. Luckily we have a hotel nearby. She's going as Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Here is her outfit, if I get permission, I think I will, <laughs> in process. It's only the very beginning. She's done so much more. I'm actually going to go over and interview her and do a little video with her um, where she's going to take you through the process of making this amazing costume. So stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks. And... Um, yeah, so we were we were chatting about costumes for the main cosplay day. Um, since we are close, I could probably go have multiple costumes. 
but I think I'm gonna go as Peg from Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Which is, my hair is kind of perfect for it now. But, so, <laughs> which is the mom, and I've probably put up a picture right here too, from Edward Scissorhands. So, it is, I'm going to make a sheath dress, like just a really simple sheath dress. I might wear like a little cardi over it. We'll see. I don't know if I want my arms out and about, but it's so hot there, so we'll see. But, yeah, I'm going to make a little pink sheath dress I believe and maybe get some piping to match the photo um, of when she's getting her hair did by Edward and it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun and I am really close to being able to buy some new glasses actually you really need to buy them because my other ones are kind of broken <laughs> um, and I am gonna get those clear ones that I was like I don't want to get but they're actually really cute, so it will really match the picture from the movie. So I bought a couple of patterns, of five patterns. So I bought a 1960s vintage, hence the sheath dress a little bit. So I was, one option for this costume would be probably to do, I think this would be too warm in San Diego, but we'll see. Um, or I could even do this guy, but I don't think that would be very flattering on my body shape, um, just because I have really broad shoulders. So, um, yeah, so that's one pattern and a good kind of staple to have in the wardrobe because I really actually really like this. This would be something I would wear to work quite often. And then I got, um, this is the one I was really thinking of using for the costume would be to make either this guy, which I think is two pieces, and or this one right here, which is a little bit flowier. But these are, this is like just a classic 60s kind of sheath dress, kind of cocoa jacket and skirt kind of look. So, got that. And then I got this because I just, I love this pink dress and I think it would be just a really classic thing to have in my wardrobe and to get some really cool like lace to go down the front and some really pretty and I love the, um, I love the length of this. I don't think I would do the cropped bit for me, maybe in the future, I don't know. Um, but I really liked this pattern and I hadn't seen this designer before so I'm, I'm eager to see how this pattern is. And then I was, I've been watching Father, uh, well Father Brown and then what did I watch the other day? Oh, I watched, um, this show that just came out on Acorn, which is a, uh, like a British TV show network if you will and it's called delicious have you guys heard of this and it's with don french and the actor that um i forget his character's name in game of thrones he's in it um and some other wonderful actors and it was not the show i was expecting it to be. <laughs> but it was really good it had a little bit of a it had such an interesting tone to it um, a little bit mystery, a little bit, for sure, drama, um, gorgeous food as well. Check it out. I won't go too much into it. Anyway, um, one of the characters at one point wears this really kind of cool 50s inspired skirt that's really long and she has pockets and it's high waisted. Lo and behold, I saw that very similar skirt yesterday at Joanne's. So I think it would be awesome to make one of these skirts. I think it's basically the same, but it has like a pocket detail there. And in the pattern is this and this shirt as well. I mean, I probably won't be wearing that, but pardon me. <laughs> but I really like this. I really like this skirt. I like the button down detail and the high waisted kind of waistband there. And I'll, yeah, so. I got that. There's kind of the original pattern, if you will. And then finally, I think I might have this pattern already. <laughs> 
but I really, or maybe I've just seen it a bunch and I haven't bought it, but I really would love to make this one version. It's Doctor Who 50s Vintage. <laughs> I really want to make this. I think that would be amazing. I don't know if it'll happen in time for Comic-Con. Maybe if my sewing juices are really flowing big time. But I think it would just be so cool to wear this. And it's so 50s. I love the little jacket with the police box. I've been watching Doctor Who, the new season. I'm not totally into it, to be honest. So I'm kind of counting down the days to the new Doctor and the new showrunner. <laughs> yeah. And I could talk about that in the future if you're interested. Or you're welcome to email me. Upper Joe at stitchingthehighnotes.com or talk to me on Ravelry about it too. But yeah, I'm just not super into it. But I do love the doctor. No matter who he's played by or she's played by. <laughs> so yeah. So that was those are my patterns. So excited. I kind of need to get a box for my patterns, but I'll talk about that in a second here. Because I did purge a little bit this week. So let's go on to the next segment. Nothing in the postie this week. Or from the postie. It's kind of good. Needed a break. <laughs> but I did want to um, answer a question in the Ask Away thread. There have been some new questions in there. And I'll um, answer them as I can. Um, in the order that they are received. Um, in... The Ravelry group there's an ask away thread so this one was from Fanny hi Fanny um, and she asked how do you keep your stash is it organized in any particular way or just whichever way it fits the letter also are you planning to participate in stash dash this summer thank you so much for asking Fanny so first of all stash dash is hosted by the knit girls I attempted to take part in it last year but I'm not planning to take part this year, maybe in the future. Um, and then as for how I organize my stash, I, um, during the Christmas break, I think it was, or during the new year, kind of transition over into the new year, I bought the, I'll just, I'll just go old school GoPro style here. I bought this little cubby area. And so I literally have just shoved in all my fingering weight yarn. <laughs> And down here, I have a couple of cubby holes. I've got my minis in this middle one, and I've got kind of some miscellaneous worsted over here. And then in this one, I have my project bags in this far one. And um, in my, I have a couple of ottomans that also have some stash on there, as well as basically what's left over from other projects, mini skeins, if you will. So. That's that. And then I also just yesterday picked up at Joanne's um, a little really cool, what do you call it? Terranium? Anyway, it's a hexagon kind of vase, if you will, or bowl um, that usually you put plants in. And I have my mini skeins that I got from Darlene, um, who is awesome granny as part of our advent calendar swap this past Christmas holiday season. So um, I'm putting up a picture here if I haven't already. So that's how I store my yarn. I, up until recently, was pretty good about cataloging it, um, my stash on Ravelry. Um, I kind of want to get caught up on that, but I kind of just, oh my gosh, I, I was, I was, um, going through my stash the other day because I've been putting like cedar ch chips in there and, um, just really trying to keep down the, the critters because when it gets warmer, um, they come out to play, as you saw with my spider on the windowsill. Um, so, yeah, and as I was going through, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much yarn. So I'm not feeling necessarily oppressed by it. I just have the urge to knit all of the socks to knit up this gorgeous yarn. And I've been very lucky. A lot of it is, is gifted yarn from some of you wonderful makers, a lot from family and friends, and some that I've purchased as well. So I'm really eager to get through and, and knit all of the things. 
So I hope that answers your question, Fanny. And thank you for asking. That brings us to the end of the podcast. So backstage knitting is the last segment. Usually it's usually when I talk about the past week, not necessarily knitting related. A lot of times it has footage from performances or rehearsals, but I've been on a bit of a break from the San Francisco Symphony where I work. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I mentioned it earlier in the podcast. I, I again, am so grateful for y'all for your comfort. Um, it was a really tough week and it's still, I'm still pretty tender. There are moments where I kind of forget what happened and then you remember and it's a little bit like a, a punch to the gut, you know, but I know from experience, unfortunately, that this grief will get softer with time and just to make sure that I'm allowing myself to feel all of the feels. I'm journaling a lot. Um, it's tied to, just so you have reference, it's it's tough because we got Hildy the week, um, just a couple weeks, I think, after my father went into hospice and it was his dream to get Hildy. And so he got to know her a little bit for um, the last few weeks of his life. And, and she was such a comfort to us in that time after we lost dad. So it's a little, her loss is a little bit like another, an, another little loss of dad, if you will, and of that time. Um, but I took it upon, upon myself. That sounds so dramatic, but I, I made sure to look through all of my photos, um, cause I wanted to gather photos of Hildy, um, which I'll show here. I'll show Hildy cause she was gorgeous. Um, I, I found some photos of her throughout her life and I ended up going through almost all of my camera roll, um, which is in the cloud, um, from the time that we'd gotten Hildy up until now. And it was really kind of healing to see how much has happened in those seven and a half years since we got her, how much we have grown as a family. My sister's married now with a baby. How much has happened in my life? I, you know, have realized my dream of singing major solos with wonderful major arts institutions and performances and. Um, I work in the arts full time, which was always my dream, whether it be singing or administratively, and I've been able to do both. My mom has has grown and and she's retired in that time since we got Hildy. She's re um, reunited, if you will, with her making and her sewing. Um, so there were some lovely pictures of Hildy in like the sewing room and. Yeah, it's just, it was really great to see that she really did have a full and wonderful life and that we were better for having her. And and as heartbreaking as it is to have her life end the way that it did, um, I wouldn't change anything. I, I'm so grateful to have had her in my life. I love those fur babies. And Baxter's doing well. He's our other dog. Um, he's a little sad. He's looking for her a little bit, which is really hard. Um, but at the same time, I think he's really enjoying being the only dog and getting all of the attention. It had been really hard on him the last couple of months because she was turning her aggression a lot t towards him. So we were having to keep him separated. I said I wasn't going to go into detail, but I guess I guess you all have a beverage and I'm going into detail, but, um, yeah, this, I was on staycation this week. So a lot of my kind of plans went by the wayside as life happens. I did get a little bit of purging done, which was my hope, um, to kind of tidy up and do a big tidying up. I got some things done in my closet. Um, I got a few things done, um, in other places in my, in my home but not nearly as much as I had hoped to do but um, it was a start so I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful to have had the time off to go up to be with family so and to have had this creative reinvigoration reinvigoration 
um, with sewing and, and feeling more confident with that and finding my own pace and my own timing with that. Um, it's very different than knitting, um, in that you can, it's, it's harder to put down, not just because you have pieces all over the place, but also because I just want to keep going. <laughs> I just want to finish it, finish it, but that you don't necessarily have to do that. You can have it, um, finish a little bit each day or each weekend. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to, to learning more and getting more confidence and to sharing that with you all. So I'm going to stop there. This is a longer podcast than I attended, and it's quite rambly, so hopefully you don't mind if this is, again, a vlog. This is, a, a you know, kind of sharing my my making adventures with you all, so it's not always going to be totally about knitting and all that jazz, but... Yeah, no. It's a little visit. A little visit while you're working on your project, which I hope is going well. I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a lovely long weekend if you're here in the States. Um, and I hope you all are staying cool if you're in the summer and starting to bundle up if it's starting to get cold where you are. And if you enjoyed this podcast and you haven't subscribed already and you would like to be alerted to when new episodes are available, um, hit the subscribe button down below. And I will see you all probably next week. Yeah, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see what I'm up to. So have a wonderful week. Um, and I will talk to you all very soon.